Hey gang, Nicole here. Most of you probably already know that storyline states are a powerful feature. But did you know that Storyline comes with a total of over 20 pre-built states for various items? In today's screencast, I'm going to show you three different ways to use Storyline's pre-built states. First, let's talk about what a state is. So a state is a way to display different views of the same item, and states are triggered by the user's interaction with the course. The first way to use states is to use what are called the default states. Objects can have up to seven predefined default states. Let's have a look at each of these. The normal state is the neutral state for any object. This is how an object appears initially by default. The hover state is how an object appears when a user moves their mouse over it. The down state is how an object appears while it's being clicked. The visited state is how an object appears after it has been clicked. And the disabled state is what you use when you want to disable an object. And selected is how an object appears when it has been clicked and it is currently selected. Now, if I click on this drop down menu, you'll see we also have a hidden state. The hidden state makes an object invisible. Notice how my continue item becomes transparent when I've applied the hidden state. As I mentioned, the default initial state is the normal state, but you can change this here to make the initial state whatever you want. You may have noticed before that when you insert a button, it automatically has five of the seven default states associated with it. On the States tab, you can edit these states, duplicate them, delete them, or add your own. When it comes to adding your own states, you can create an unlimited amount of custom states. These can look any way you want and have any title that you want. Here, I've created a custom state called Nicole's Custom State, and I've made it turquoise. Just keep in mind, the custom state won't become visible unless I either set it as the default state or add a trigger to my slide that makes the custom state appear. So now let's take a look at the second way to use Storyline states, which is when we're building out a drag and drop. Storyline has three custom states that are made specifically for drag and drop interactions. The drag over state is how a drag item looks when it's dragged over a drop target, or how a drop target looks when an object is dragged over it. The drop correct state is how a drag item looks when it's dropped on the correct target. And the drop incorrect state is how a drag item looks when it's dropped on an incorrect target. To add this state to an object, simply insert your object and create a new state. From this drop-down menu, choose the drag and drop state you want to use. Remember, they only work in a free-form drag and drop interaction. Let's preview these states to make sure we get a clear understanding of how they work. Notice how right now my shape is displaying the normal state. When I drag the drag item over the drop target, we see the drag over state appear on both the drag item and the drop target. The drag items become a slightly darker gray. It's not very noticeable, but it does happen. And the drop target's drag over state has a stroke around it. Now I'll click Submit. The drag items placed on the correct drop target show the drop correct state, and the drag items placed on the incorrect drop target show the drop incorrect state. So these are all incorrect. Oops. Now let's say you want the drop correct or incorrect state to display before the users have submitted the interaction. Is that possible with Storyline? Absolutely, with just one easy click. Simply navigate to your drag and drop options and disable the option to delay item drop states until interaction is submitted. Now, if we preview again, you'll see that as soon as we drop the drag item onto a drop target, it shows if it's the correct or incorrect state. So you have a lot of ability to customize your, app, your interactions with these drag and drop states. All right, let's move on to our third fun way to use Storyline states. Character states. Did you know that the illustrated characters in Storyline come with a dozen pre-built expression states? That's right, there's a pre-built state for each of the 12 facial expressions that are available for illustrated characters. This means if you want your character to look angry or disappointed, you don't need to take the time to build out each of those states. They're already pre-made for you. You'll notice if I click on an illustrated character and look at the States tab, there's nothing there. The expression states only get created when you need to use it. Let me show you what I mean. 
when I add a trigger that is related to an illustrated character's state. Storyline knows this, and under the states dropdown, there will be 12 pre-made expression states that you can choose from. If you want her to look angry, just choose the angry state. Want her happy? Choose the happy state. It's that easy to set up your triggers with the pre-existing expression states. Now, if we preview and test our expression states, you'll see that everything is working great. It's that easy to trigger the pre-made expression states for illustrated characters. So there you have it, three different ways that you can make use of storyline states in your next e-learning project. Thanks for watching.